Today we are finishing up the Monastery of Poseidon by building the buildings that actually would make it a monastery because beforehand it was not. But for the majority of today's video I'm going to talk about the first character that I have somewhat written out for this fancy world of mine. So welcome everyone, my name is Poison Blade and I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. So when it comes to the Monastery of Poseidon... As I said beforehand, it wasn't a monastery, it was just that temple and a giant statue of a naked Poseidon. Now we are finally making it an actual monastery and true to the name of the god, or true to the gods being worshipped here, the monastery is kind of chaotic. <laughs> I would assume that Poseidon being a god of the oceans is kind of a chaotic person. If you read his myths, definitely is. But when it came to the monastery, I wanted to mix three different styles. I wanted to mix Greek or ancient Greek with Arabian and Byzantine. But that was the intention. What ended up happening was we have this ancient Greek temple with some Arabian influences. We have some build or some Arabian buildings with some Greek and like a slight hint of Byzantine influences. And then the final building of today's video is just Byzantine. I didn't even try there to mix all the other styles because for some reason I just like sometimes I get into a building zone and I just zone everything else out and then I ended up with just a completely Byzantine building so I mean it sort of works because Poseidon chaos is monastery chaos so sort of still works and we are starting off today by building a well, it was supposed to be a minaret, or not a minaret, it was supposed to be a bell tower, like just a rectangular bell tower. But then I got inspiration to have it more rounded, then I wanted to... Yeah, in the end it just ended up being, appearance-wise, a minaret. I still think there's a bell in there calling the priest to prayer or the monks, because they're, it's a monastery, so there needs to be some structure in there. But I actually really like that I went a more minaret route. Because you will see in the rest of today's video, and if you saw the previous video of the Monastery of Poseidon when I built the temple, that most of it is very rectangular. So to have a more round build break that up actually works really well. So for the longest period of time, I did not think that this was going to work. Like it's such a different style to the main temple. It's still somewhat like the shape of it really works well. The architecture style maybe doesn't work as well, but that's mostly, I think, because of the inclusion of just that purely Byzantine building. Also, this is just the thing that Assassin's Creed has forced upon me, but I want to climb this building. But then I want to climb every tall building. I will probably fall to my death, though, because I'm not that well balanced. <laughs> well, I don't fall over a lot. I'm just like, I would be the person to try and climb a tower and then fall down. <laughs> no joking around there, that's literally what probably would happen. But anyway, as I said, I wanted to talk about the first character that I've written for this fantasy world of mine. To explain this to anyone who doesn't know, when it comes to my builds, I really like to also build a story with them. I, When it comes to my projects, I like to have a story behind the project, but also have just a world behind the project. So I really like the world and story building aspect that you can make with this game, make with just the builds. So I really am into just world building and such. So yes, Kern of the Shire is just part of a very large fantasy world that I've created, which also includes Valhalla, Teenopolis, which is a ruined city that is literally just the excuse for why I don't go back to Tianopolis because lore-wise it's in ruins. <laughs> and then also Ozaru is like far off to the southwest, no southeast. So yeah, so for everyone who doesn't understand or who didn't know that, that's basically what I really like to do with my builds to have that story. But I've never really gone fully into character building. Like I've mentioned different characters here and there. Like I've mentioned Hakim, who's the barman at Squirrel's Tavern, like he's, I always think like he's seven foot tall, he has a pet cat that he na has named Soraya, but in reality it's a lion, but because Hakim is so tall, because Soraya is really bonded with Hakim, she really is just a cat with Hakim, like she likes to be pets, she likes to sleep a lot, she likes to, you know, just play with Hakim, but if you aren't Hakim and you annoy her, she will take your arm off. So regular cat behavior. And then I think I might have also mentioned Cyrus. I 
Dink. I'm, I might also be spoiling Dinks if I haven't mentioned him. Probably both of those things. Yeah, Cyrus is connected to Akeem, but I've not fully written him out yet to actually write down a character because besides Hakim, Cyrus and his pet, well, Hakim's pet cat Soraya, which is actually a lion, but you know, is basically a cat for Hakim. I've mentioned all other characters, but I've never fully written them out yet. So to finally have somewhat of a written out character, I'm really proud of. See, still in like the fine tuning stage, like some things I'm still like, do I want her to be this or that? There's still some fine tuning that I need to do with when it comes to her, but the character that I'm talking about before I go on a million different tangents, because welcome to Poison Blades, where I go on a million different tangents and forget the original point I was trying to make. Like I usually have like when I go into a voiceover, I have one point that I want to talk about, but then I talk about a million different other points and forget that one point. So now let's get to the actual point and start talking about Heraclea Artemisia, the first character that I've somewhat written out, but she's still in the fine tuning stage. Heraclea is her title, like her name is just Artemisia, but Heraclea is basically taken a Byzantine title and somewhat morphed it because I didn't want to just like, oh, here's this real world title, it's into this fantasy world of mine. I know I'm going on a tangent here, but if you guys have any suggestions for a name for this fantasy world, I am very open to them because that's one of the things that I constantly just put up. I constantly am just like, oh, I will write up a name for this world later. I will, you know, do that tomorrow. I will do that next week. And then I end up never having a name. Like right now, this fantasy world has the placeholder name of Ferranos. But I don't want this world to actually be named Ferranos. Although it would be kind of funny by this point because... It's been a placeholder name for like half a year now. So if you guys have any suggestions for names for this fantasy world, drop them in the comments because I for sure could use some. But anyway, going back onto Artemisia. When it came to Artemisia, first let's explain the Heraclius title. Heraclius is basically, in this world, is like a governor. So Artemisia governs the village of Cardas which is situated just outside of Kenobsha, it's a desert village. Artemisia, well, I did the thing that I usually think isn't the right approach to her character, but meh, for this one it actually worked in a way. But I wrote her appearance and then personality. So I first was like, oh, she looks like this. So Artemisia is a, well, of course a full grown adult because they won't give a title to a child, but she is a full grown woman. She's like 27, 28, somewhere around her late 20s. Again, I still need to do some fine tuning. She has tanned skin, dark black hair that's slightly curly, and she has, let's just say she has curves. She has, you know, so she, in my words and also the words of the people who get up, she is considered a beautiful woman. But Artemisia wasn't, well, basically wasn't born into wealth. She wasn't born into nobility. So she actually grew up in poverty. She was an orphan on the streets of Istar, which is a city on the other side of the Azentine Empire. Ken is the capital of the Azentine Empire or of the Empire of Azentium, which again, I really thought I was clever with that name, but it's literally just the Byzantine Empire or Byzantium but just dropped the by thing. Yeah, she grew up in as an orphan in poverty in Istar, being like a street performer and dancer and an actress. And then she, you know, got the opportunity to break into the upper social circles or just, you know, work her way up there. So she got that opportunity. And then it was just like, all right, what's her character going to be? And then I went into personality. <laughs> so, yeah, that's usually not how I want or how I would like to write a character. I usually want to, like, ha write down a personality and then the appearance. But here I went backwards, basically. So then I made it on, like, all right, so she's considered a beautiful woman in Kanabshar, in Asantium. So I want her to make that one of her strengths, to use her appearance use her beauty to advance herself. 
this is just a thing in real life as well. If you show a bit more cleavage, show a little bit more skin, people are going to be distracted by you. Either by taking offense to you or by being interested in you. And I wanted her to use that distraction because for anyone who doesn't know this about Keanu Bashar, when it comes to the nobility, is all about scheming and intrigue and all of that. Like you scheme your way to the top basically. So I wanted Artemisia to use her appearance to distract people because when you're distracted you're not on top of your end game, especially when it comes to scheming and intrigue. So she basically delivers the first blow by just looking the way she does and then uses her wits and her shrewdness or just her wits and cunning to completely run you over basically. I also, yes, I've rewritten Ken Abishar to be less murdery and more scheming and intrigue and not have just a giant pile of bodies because it made a little bit more sense to not have murder everywhere. This is basically what I first thought like, oh yeah, so she's kind of this femme fatale character, but with brains. <laughs> and yeah, she still is kind of like she, I don't say like, let's just first, because I'm going to be kind of chaotic here, let's first just write down her personality. So she is seductive, like she uses her appearance to distract and just advance her way up to the top. I never say that she's actually sleeping with people, but she just uses that dis initial distraction to sweep you over to her side, basically, or run you down if you're a rival. <laughs> and then uh, uses her words, uses her wits and her cunning and intelligence to, you know, do the rest of the... because you can look as great as you want, but if you don't have the brains to back it up in Kaan you are going to get run over. <laughs> so she uses her looks as the first step, she then uses her intelligence, so she is, well, seductive, she is manipulative, which can be a bad trait, but in Kaan is it's kind of just a standard trait for nobles to be manipulative, because that's, you know, scheming and intrigue, you need to be sort of manipulative. I wanted to offset that with her being kind, because she came from poverty, she had you know, she struggled in her early life and now she's, with her being the basically governess of the village of Kadas, I wanted her to be like, oh, she struggled in her early life, so now she wants to prevent anyone else from struggling and having a rough life. So she does take well care of the people that she governs over. And then also her being shrewd, ambitious, because she had to work her way and scheme her way up to the top. And of course, perseverance but here lies the thing that i am also open for suggestions for so now i'm open for suggestions for the name of the world but also artemisia's flaw because so far all of her traits in the context of canopsha are good but what makes for me a character grounded and you know makes a character not that much of like a i think it kind of like a Mary Sue character when there's no flaws in a character. I wanted to have like a flaw to Artemisia that would ground her, but it's like, you know, I could say, oh, she's afraid of spiders, but that isn't strong enough to counteract her good character traits. So I needed to have flaw that is strong enough to, you know, counteract that. So then my initial thought was she is afraid of magic. Magic in my fantasy world isn't that widespread of a thing. You have to really spend the effort learning it unless you're like a priest, but then, you know, you have to dedicate your life to a certain god. So magic isn't just widespread because that creates a lot of things like, how do I explain this? How do I explain that? I also just didn't want a very heavy magic world. Of course, there's magic heavy areas and people who are you know naturally talented at magic but it's like a handful of people in an entire empire that have a natural talent to magic but then i just thought like oh artemisia is like deadly afraid of magic basically for her like with her ambition perseverance and all of the things that i've mentioned so far with her struggling in early life in poverty and such she likes now to have control of the situation and for her magic is just chaos it's completely no control because magic can do anything basically so for her to be like deadly afraid of magic kind of still works with a character because that's also something with a flaw that i wanted that it works with the character 
So her, Artemisia being deadly afraid of magic would work because, you know, for her, it's going against everything that she has experienced so far. She had control. When she lost control, that's also a thing that I've written into her backstory. Like when Artemisia, again, didn't grow up in no as a nobility or part of the nobility. She didn't grow up in wealth. She got the opportunity to move up in the world and move up into the so the higher social circles. But at her first like initial presentation, all of her screams worked really well, and so she became arrogant. And that that arrogance and her not seeing the faults in her schemes led to the person that gave her the opportunity and the person that she was very close to to die because of her faults. And so Artemisia continuously blames her, herself for that. And that is just like she lost control there so, and she lost someone. So now she's like deadly afraid of situations basically where she doesn't have control. So she's not so much a control freak, but she knows or she wants to have like sort of a handle on things and for her magic is just the complete opposite of that so she's like deadly afraid of magic at the very least she might work with someone with like a mage but she will forever be distrustful because it just represents her worst moments and her worst fears but again i am open to suggestions for maybe a better character flaw for Artemisia because I don't want to write her as this sort of hero character that doesn't have any flaws because but yeah Artemisia to just sum up her character she will seduce you distract you and then you will basically she will run you over with her words but also she will like she does care for you but if it suits her she will stab you in the back if it, it's has her move up in the social circles or maintain her position so yeah that's artemisia in a nutshell dangerous but pretty kind of like or dangerous pretty but with the brains to back it up so basically can i show in a nutshell as well but anyway that's going to be it for today's video i know it's a little bit rambly at the end with artemisia but i hope i conveyed her right and if you like this video, there is the like and subscribe button if you want to see more, of course. And then there's the notification button. But before that notification button starts to work, I will have a name thought of for this world. So that's probably not going to be ever unless you guys give me a few proper suggestions. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed today's video and I wish all of you a wonderful day. Bye bye.